Know what you want and go and get it. Nobody will ever do this for you. And this isn't bodybuilding, this is life. I got one crack at this. I make the life I want. You know, so whatever you want out of life, go for it. Go and get it. Nobody will do it for you. But it's going to be hard, but you commit, you consistently work at it, and rewards will always come. Hi, I'm Christian Williams, and welcome to another episode on Physique Transformation, the podcast that connects like-minded people that are all passionate to share the message and help you improve and transform your life. On today's podcast, we have a special guest, a really good friend of mine. We have Lisa Gelsey. Lisa has had 30 years experience, and she specializes in helping performance of top athletes, both on the stage and off the stage. She works with competitors of all different classes from all qualifiers through amateur competitions right away to the Olympia stage. She is a pausing coach. She's actually helped develop and craft some of the best pausing routines you would have seen. She's been a judge of some of the best competitions that you would have seen at top level, amateur and both professional. Her areas of expertise are strength and conditioning and functional training, nutritional weight management, and competitive and non-competitive physique, athlete stage presentation, coaching for all competitive classes, sports-specific training for sports of people's choice, as well as expertise in exercise prescription and technique. She's a dear friend of mine. I've had the privilege of working close with her and learning from her over the years. And on today's podcast, we're going to get some nice information across to you. And I'm pleasured and I'm privileged to have Lisa on the show. Lisa, how's everything doing over in the, over in the UK? Hello, my darling. It's going really, really well. Um, luckily, we are on a little bit of a minor heat wave. So we're up to the dizzy heights of 24 degrees here. Woo! So that's lovely. So um, for this sort of time of the year, we usually, as you know, it's getting into the chilly stage, but we're enjoying every second of the warmth. We're in the middle of probably at the height, I would probably say, of um, competitions in the UK at the moment. Um, there's competitions going on today. Um, for us as um, judges at the moment, now our next three weekends are completely chocker with shows all over the country, which is brilliant. Um, and yeah, it's an exciting time because obviously for you as well, we're just coming out of lockdown. People are starting to find their physiques again, which I think they lost for a long time. Um, but in a way, I think what that's done for a lot of competitors is allowed them their physiques to have a little bit of a rest. So they're regenerating better than they were before we went into lockdown. So the quality of athletes at the moment is absolutely exceptional. So the UK is doing really well uh, in in our field anyway. Yeah, great. I mean, I've only just kind of thought of this now because obviously I've been in Dubai for four years. And uh, one thing, you know, the UK, there's a lot of shows going on. Uh, there's a lot of hunger. You know, it's a working class, you know, place. So everyone's hard working. And I kind of, like when you were just mentioning that, I kind of thought, wow, it's funny because I don't see as much, you know, um, drive towards competition there's like one or two competitions a year over this part of the world and people do travel but obviously with the lockdown situation the travel has been restricted but um it's, it's really like I, I was not aware so that's incredible like you said you know the lockdown did force people to be at home and be restricted and, and put on weight and you know go a little bit crazy and the outcome of that has just become more hunger more drive more recovery everyone's recovered more yeah. so they're more um, yeah. receptive so that's incredible and really good and you're a, you're as busy as always i imagine if not busier right Absolutely. it's but it is crazy busy but it's crazy busy but it, with even more enthusiasm um not just from myself but from the people who were coming to us and as you say the just the thirst for success is greater now that I would say than it's been for a long, long time. Almost to the point we, um, you found people were a little bit, um, well, it's all right, I can do it next week. It's fine, I can do it next week. And all of a sudden, that having that taken away from for 18 months to two years, it's almost as if they've just been like coiled springs waiting to explode and they are exploding. 
there's muscle mass like you haven't seen for the longest time. In, in all divisions as well, you see that. Like you, like I said, Wales. Uh, we both from Wales, so Wales yeah. is a is a you know it's hard working and, and people are the guys in the gym, the girls in the gym. You know that's one thing I missed when I first came to Dubai. To be honest, because I was as competing still at the time, and everyone was training for you know vanity. Whereas in, in Wales, you cha- train for respect and, and pride. It's like, you know, are you going to train till you're sick or are you going to pussy out? Yeah. So to a certain extent, you're not wrong. And of course, the thing is, what we're seeing now, since we've opened this gym, um, the catchment area we have, we have a greater diversity of member. So we have some members, your 16, 17 year olds, up to the 70, 80 year olds. But the 16 to 17 year olds that are coming into the gym now, are just it's a totally different mindset mm. because the thing is they're there to train because they're surrounded by people who are there to train so for athletes coming into uh, gyms at this age it's a brilliant time because they're surrounded by people who really want to achieve yeah you know so it is it's, it's a it's a it's a different vibe but it's a really um you know you can just drink on their enthusiasm and that's what keeps you going you know I, and it's funny because it's we go back to like you know the dinosaur ages of um, mentality where people would say, well you know like for example when I was young and when I was seventeen there was no information like it was now, and we, we often hear people who are much kind of peer to me and even people my of my generation saying well you know we learned the hard way and you know we 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 fell in love with the sport or or these younger generations they take in things too early and supplements which we can all agree but also in any sport kind of the the younger you get into it the the more you can excel i mean you start young and by 24 you're a professional and that's where you know your your career is going to take off yeah absolutely right you know, and as you say, the thing is, there is so much information um, available to any everybody now. And I mean, the thing is, when we think when we were um, first training and then we were getting into it, you didn't know who the Olympia winners were until you bought the magazine three, four months later. So, you know, whereas now you can actually on your phone, you can watch the Olympia. It's a totally different time. But I get that. And I do think for people who are our generation, harp on and oh I'll, I'll i'll choose my words carefully reminisce through rose-colored spectacles about the good old days you know back in the day yeah but today is the day you know and as i said the thing is we must appreciate and move with society with the um, opportunities that we have for information but use them to everybody's advantage not just the youth everybody because we're using them between our videos and everything else that we're putting out there. Exactly, yeah. The medium we're using at this moment now. Mm. We didn't have that, even really before lockdown, even this wasn't such a big thing, you know? So times have made us change and I don't think it's for the worst. I think it is for the better, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's great to say that because, you know, all we would have to do is, is even have a conversation with our parents to understand that, their time was always better and the parents before them's time was always better and they would say oh you know when i was young i we could leave the we could leave the house door open and it would nobody would rob us you know yeah, and we had nothing was robbing <laughs> exactly there was nothing there <laughs> no, and also they, <laughs> they probably got beat the shit up and again vice <laughs> versa time changes and the generation has come in you know uh forward you know uh, in front of us is our views are going to be completely different to their views, you know, and with this kind of technocratical kind of environment we go into and this technology. So like you said, it's moving. You've got to go with it and you will got to take Absolutely. advantage of yeah. what's available. So yeah. what do you say with this then? Obviously with this information going out there, these younger generations coming in, how would you best advise them to kind of, you know, Put in the work, of course, be patient, of course, but also excel when they're very, you know, ego driven. Uh, they tell us in a sense and, and they like kamikazes, most of them. They'll just, you know, what's your advice there? The most important thing is to do your homework. 
And homework isn't necessarily what you'll see on social media. There are so many avenues so that you can find out as much information as you need and valuable information that you need, but not on social media. Too many people are drawn into the glamour, the glitz, the end results. Um, I had one girl that uh, came to me and she wants to compete. Great, that's wonderful. And she said, I bought my bikini, I got my, or, my order my jewelry and I've ordered my shoes. I said, right, okay, that's fine. I said, right, how many times a week do you train? Well, I've never been in the gym. If you don't mind asking then, what makes you think, oh, but I see them all on social media and they look so glamorous and it's like, right, with no disrespect, put your bikini back in the box, cancel the order for the jewelry, cancel the order for the shoes, get in the gym for three years and then come back and talk to me. Then you can talk to me. But of course, we are consumed by the end result. So do your homework, find out as much information as you possibly can. Train as hard as you can, commit and consistency, commitment, consistency. And that even goes down to your bare basics of just your nutrition, your water intake and your training commitments. When you figure those three, then you go on to other things. But I totally understand when you say your 17, your 18 old, year olds, they want that result today. But bottom line is do your homework, mm. find out as much information as you can, speak to people that have been there. Yeah. And many of them don't think that the first thing you do is you get the little sprinkle on top of the cupcake without building the cupcake first. Brilliant. There's, there's so much information out there, but get your homework done and don't take it off social media. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, the, the people who, who, what you find, especially with bodybuilding, because you know, there, there's, there's not much return. You've got to be loving this, right? I mean, you can look, you can extract whatever you want from it. You can turn it into a business like you've done as well. You know, like I'm doing as well. And like many people are, you can earn a lot of money around it. You can, you know, fulfill your ambitions and goals, whatever they may be. But to go to the gym and to kill yourself because that's what it takes day in, day out and to starve yourself because that's what it takes. You know, you got to love this stuff and you got to be doing it for the reason of love. And what you find is the people that almost do the best and not just the people that got the genetics, of course, but the people that were doing this stuff anyway, they were doing it for fun and then they got into it, you know? And, and that's it, because I mean, right, so we've just come on now and I've just finished my meal and you know, you know what I'm like. So on Friday's date, the 10th of September, 2001 was the last day I stepped on stage. I haven't been on stage as a, a heavyweight bodybuilder for 20 years, but I've just finished my, la my meal now before we came on of turkey mince and green beans. Now, you know, that's day in, day out, 20 years ago. I do this because I love it. It's in me. Yeah. And that is, I'm still consistent. I'm still committed. I still get all my five, six, seven liters of water in. I still do it because that's what allows me to get the results that I want. Yeah. And all those things day after day after day is monotony, but is result making. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as you say, the thing is, it is far too easy, especially at 17, 18 to still enjoy, want to enjoy socializing and having a few drinks with your pals and eat. yeah cool do it um because you're still growing up but this game is hard work but hard work pays off and that's through life you work hard you get the results that you want i love it and i i love your approach and again you know that's why that's why i work with you personally you know with the pausing and the training because you know you are you're very intimidating in that sense because you have a lot of credibility to back you up, but you're very empathetic, empathetic, and you very have a good emotional intelligence to kind of speak to people on the level to to realize that you I'm with you, I'm with you, and whenever I was with you, I felt like you was so engaged to me, only me, and that was so powerful, and it made me feel like this person invested in me. And not only that, but like you said, you put yourself in the judgment of, of the people who are going to make you the best and the people who are not going to tell you what you want to hear, but tell you what you need to hear and be straight. Like you just said there, you know, until you've done one to three years, then come back. 
So yeah. you be straight. I sit down with clients and they see a pipe dream. And um, I'm like, look, dude, you know, at the end of the day, you've got no muscle on you. You know, I say in the nicest way, you need more time to, to kind of uh, build the foundation. You, we're going to strip you down to nothing. You know, this isn't a, a, a three months. You know, you want to give yourself a year at least of yeah. solid maturity, you know, before you even think about uh, stripping down, let alone getting on stage. And it, exactly right. I mean, the thing is, I didn't compete till 10 years after I'd started using weight burn exercise because I didn't feel that I had enough understanding and respect of my fellow athletes to stand there as competition. Mm. If you can't respect the process and the end result that is really needed to stand up there and feel that you could not have done another thing, it's not your time yet. Mm. When you stand there, you'll never feel satisfied with the end result because if you do, you'll never keep going. You will never have that thirst for improvement. But if you stand there and think, do you know what? Blood, sweat and tears and a bit more. I've done everything as asked of me. I couldn't have done another thing. Then is your time to enjoy that moment on stage. Up until then, if you've shied away from that extra 10 minutes cardio, I really could have done with not skipping that meal. Or actually, I didn't really need that pizza. Well, there will always be that air of apprehension that I could have done more. Well, if you feel you could have done more, you could have done more. Yeah, if you stand there and think, do you know what? Shit or bust, I've done everything I can do. Then you enjoy your moment on stage and the results will speak for themselves, you know? Mm. But um, no, you're absolutely right. When I'm working with anybody, as I've always said, I never ever take my phone anywhere with me in the gym, ever. You pay for my time, you have my time 100%. And I will invest everything I can into you whilst we're together. Yeah. Because I've enjoyed those moments on the stage, right? I've enjoyed the prep moments. They've been hard, but I did enjoy them. I'm sure Mike would say otherwise, but there's nothing I enjoy more now as a judge and obviously as a head judge and judging all over the world in you know different federations. There's nothing I enjoy more than watch somebody enjoy themselves on the stage. That is the most satisfying moment of bodybuilding, watching their physiques, evolve watching them develop through their posing and that's why i'm very much into posing because i was talking to um one of my clients today i don't care how much you leg press i don't care how much you can squat i don't care if you bench press or don't even squat i don't care when you stand on the stage and your physique does all the talking i don't need to know anything else but there's nothing more frustrating when you see a physique come out and you think here we go good one yeah and i sit up nothing happens and nothing happens, as you say, no muscle development, no, the journey of the pose doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. That is frustrating. Well, there's no time and that's the thing is no passion. And, and, and the one thing you, you, when you were speaking there, you know, I competed for many years and I, I, I never, I didn't always look the way I wanted to, but I did whatever was asked upon me or all I thought I could do. And I remember I used to like, I remember like just severely like every show was tough and I give more the next time because what was hard for me the one time was not hard the next. For example, following a diet, well, that become easy. Yeah. Doing the cardio, that become easy. Okay. What more can I do? Okay. What do I need to work on? All right. I need to go around pulling my gut in all the time. Okay. That's a new challenge. And I remember when I finished my cardio, which would be usually around three days out, or maybe even less, depending on how much I was behind <laughs> for whatever reason. I don't know why. I would like cry. I would cry with overwhelming joy. And I felt like, oh, I did it. I I I I did it. And the show was three days later, but I I did every every demand I asked of myself, all the things I didn't want to do, all the times I got up in the cold and all the times that I was frustrated and weak and tired and miserable. I didn't once, and I swear this, Lisa, right? All the competitions I did, I did you know, once have any bite of anything outside the plan I was on. Maybe the plan was not the plan for me. Maybe I was starting behind where I should have been, whatever these reasons are. But I never once had even a grain of rice outside whatever I was doing. 
And that was such a powerful achievement for me. It taught me what I can do. I'm applying the same yeah. mindset into business, into relationships, into communication. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful, and like you said, when you're watching these physiques on stage, because you're such a passionate bodybuilder by heart, and you a passionate trainer as well, you know, you love even now, you know, where people might not be aware. You 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 live in more like an athlete now than probably you ever did because you're training hard for one. You you de- you're developing a lot of content for two. So you you're on shows, so you've got to look the part. Plus, you train in a lot of people. So you you your business is like an athlete. You have to perform and be energetic and give. And um, so you you supply in your body with exactly what it needs, with no emotional attachment to, oh, this is nice and this is yummy. It's like, this is what I need, simple, you know? That is exactly right. Food is not an emotion. Food is a fuel. That's all it is. But unfortunately, as a society, um, we almost reward with food. Mm. Be a good boy now. If you do it and you've done well with your exams, I'll take you to McDonald's. If you're good, you can have sweets. If you, it's always with a, 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 there is always a reward of bad food, you know. And that's the thing, as you say, because the way we've all we've been together for thirty three years, we've always lived with uh, and using food for fuel. So my children only knew, knew, only have ever known food as fuel. Mm. They've never ever missed out. But if they ever reward, you would I would always reward with either things like just a, um, magazines, books, things like that, educational things. So they never had that. If you're good, you'll have sweets, right? And you say, unfortunately, as we go through, and I think lockdown has made this even worse. That as soon as McDonald's was open, the queues for McDonald's in the UK were just obscene you know absolutely obscene so if we can start to understand that food is a fuel it's not an emotion you can still celebrate you still go out for meals you still do everything but you know what to eat and when to eat it you know and it's um yeah but that you're absolutely right emotional eating for whatever oh when i'm sad i eat well no just go and do something to make you happy you know because you eat shit and you feel even worse after you know it's just no, but you're absolutely right. It's a vicious circle. Like you said, a lot of this is embedded from our, you know, childhood beliefs. Like you said, you go to the doctors, you get a lollipop, good boy, good girl, you know, and, yeah. and not only that, but this is what people don't understand is, look, you know, we are, you know, by nature, we are primitive hunters. We would wake up and we would have to go and hunt. So now we don't have to hunt, but we still have the desire to eat until we can't stop because we might not eat again. And these big corporate consumers, look, are aware of this. So there's billboards everywhere. There's food campaigns out there because they know just the same as pornography and these quick click things that get people to buy into. So no wonder why you're craving. It's not your lifting levels going up. It's the fact of your eyes are bigger than your belly at this point, you know? (laughs) So just being aware of, yeah. Yeah, exactly that. I was um, um, when, with one of my clients now when they're coming into their final week of uh, show because they're competing next weekend. And on their plan, I always put, yes, okay, you can relax your food the evening of the show, but be careful, EBTB. And he came and he said, what's EBTB? Eyes bigger than belly. Mm. Uh, all right, yeah, okay, because that is exactly it. The eyes are way, way bigger than the belly, especially once you've been on contest prep, when your food uh, meals uh, size-wise are a little on the small side compared to what you would normally have. But it's surprising, as you say, the belly ache after, but no, yeah, yeah, eyes bigger than belly, definitely. And I would say, I think this is where I'm... Um, I, uh, there is something that really gets me is when people have competed, when they're working with um, coaches, once show day is done, they've only paid up till show day, goodbye. 
Yeah. People are like, whoa, 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 hang on a minute now. You've mm. been with them for 13, 14, 15, 16 weeks. And then when they need you the most is when you come out of that, oh my God, what do I do next stage? The judges, the, uh, the coaches have already gone by. I very much, very much work with um, my clients for post show, yeah. even probably a little bit more intense than I would pre show. Because the thing is, you're on a roll. You know where you go in, and as you say, your eating plan, yeah, it's fine. I've got it. I've focused it. It's made easy. Mm. I've competed now. What do I do now? Oh my God. You know, and as I always say, show day is all your Christmases come at once, but the day after is all your boxing days. What do I do? What do I do now? What do I eat? Where do I go? What do I drink? Do I do it? Drink? Can I eat what I want? I can eat what I want. Woohoo! It's no, no, yeah. no, no, no. I always say if you've taken 12 to 14 to 16 weeks to get to this point, you should take around about 12 to 14 to 16 weeks to get back as you were, not 12 to 14 to 16 hours. Yeah. Take your time, you know? And I mean, obviously, a lot of people will say reverse dieting and things like that. Now, Obviously, um, the hardest part is your water manipulation um, and things like this. It's bad enough for the guys, but girls, they're just getting themselves post shows in such states, um, as in because they're not really guided out of their show. They'll yeah. do all the guidance to get in it, but guidance out of the show uh, is just, it's so, so important. It's so important. Yeah, and like you said, you know, I've, I've always said, look, if you care anyway, because some people don't, you see some, some people, they don't care. Look, there's no motivation to get yourself in shape, like being up on stage in less kind of cloth than a sock, covering your bits, which are shriveled up because you're scared and nervous, and you compare against lineup of guys or girls or whoever with in front of hundreds of people with a phone, with live video feeds and pictures, and then you're being judged. You know, and you're yeah. being judged by a partner. If that doesn't motivate you to get up in the morning and do the best you can do to make sure you work hard, then nothing will. So it does. It motivates you know, almost everybody. And people become excessively driven because they have to. The problem becomes without that incentive, without that kind of carrot angle in front, when you put that away, it's so difficult to be committed for people. That's why you need the accountability more than ever at this yes. time. Yes. So I 100% agree. And that's one thing I want to talk to you about, because as you just mentioned there, the women, um, you know, they're rebounding, uh, you know, terribly in, in a sense, and it's affecting emotional upsets up and down. And, and then they starve themselves to kind of get a weight down for a, that only lasts for a, a week, probably before they binge again. And I've, I've certainly noticed from working with competitors and just being around the industry that you see a lot of kind of, I wouldn't say eating disorders, but a lot of bad relationships with food after the competition, you know? And then what tends to happen is you get a lot of people then, they start turning like sour towards the competition. Like if that caused that, but yeah. it was like, okay, maybe it was just the, the sabotage of what you did. You were like in this turmoil of punishment. Yes. And, you know, you're absolutely right. I mean, the thing is, obviously, any competition diet to be in a condition that's applicable for the class you're in is harsh. It is harsh. It's harsh and it's hard work. Again, going back to, as we said, as a society, we are all, all right, apart from the one or two, carrying too much weight. We shouldn't be carrying the weight round that we are at the moment, things like that. This is becoming worse. So to get the, the um, condition applicable, you find that the, the diet is quite stressful, it's quite hard, it's, it's something you have to commit to. To be normal, normal of the eyes of society, you put on a tremendous amount of weight too quickly. But then, as you said, the backlash is then you, the athletes are blaming the prep, the competition. This has done this to me. Well, no, as I said, like anything, if you've taken 16 weeks to get to some point, you should take 16 weeks to come back out. That is how the body will adjust 
and it will change to the, the situation it finds itself in. Now, you touched on hormones and things like that, about mood swings and things. Now, I'll put this in layman's terms for girls uh, uh, as much as anybody else, right? <laughs> hormones, <laughs> all right, just because of the hair, hormones <laughs> and things like that are guided by your body fat content. Now, the fatter you are, male or female, the more estrogen you produce in the body, right? So when you see a man that's overweight, he'll have the moobs, he'll have the back fat, he'll have the, the belly pouch and things like that. So you'll start to take on female tendencies, okay? But then when women start to drop their body fat down naturally, right? So there, there's the, in, I'll give you a clue. See that bottle there? That bottle is all hormone. Basically for a female, I'm 75% estrogen, 20% testosterone, the other 5% is made up with your others, your, your adrenalines, your insulins and, and everything else. Okay, so there's my, my bottle and it will always be full. You will have one, except yours will be 75% testosterone, 20% estrogen, blah, de, blah, blah. So I'm going basic now, okay? As my body fat comes down, I have a little shake of the bottle and my estrogen starts to come down and my own natural testosterone takes up. So my bottle will always stay full. Right now, as the female form comes, uh, uh, the estrogen comes down. Obviously, we start to look a little bit harder. You'll find you'll be able to gain a little bit more muscle. You look drier, be purely and simply because my ratios are changing. And as I say, the same with a man. If he's a drinker, guaranteed his estrogen level is going up, and he's taking on the female tendencies. Okay, but then when we start to put that body fat back on too quickly, that is when that bottle is doing this. And when this bottle is doing this, she's up and down, I'm up and down, she's happy, she's miserable. She's the body cannot deal with everything so quickly. So if we slowly start to taper our food and reintroduce our food into um, the body, the body will circulate and um, start to balance itself out in a much better way. So you'll find the water retention is not an issue. The, bat, the fat coming on too quickly is not an issue. Just take your time. So when they say reverse dieting, to a certain extent, if the coach is not with you, go back to your eating plans and just work your way back. It's the best way for you. But yeah. I think at the moment, I think the thing is at the moment is, um, is the water retention and the way people are actually um, drying out for the want of a better word. Yeah is going in and down routes that is this it's just there's no need for it there's no need for it it's just way way too harsh way too much you know with the industry i mean everyone's dying like is this yeah obviously you know people people die every day right they do them and you know you can blame it on what you want but also like you said people uh the hunger is more than it was is the competitive nature is more than it was and and people are willing to do more than they did and people are being uh, misguided. I mean, I, I, I hear some st just stupid things, you know, stupid. And I'm like, I got guys I work with and I, I, I do my best to say, you, 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 you spoke about something earlier and I thought it was brilliant. It's like, you know, even before you consider taking anything, you know, are you training as, like I say to clients, okay, well, how much, how much commitment did you put in the gym this week? Okay. Out to 10, eight. All right. Until you can do 10, week in, week out, week in, week out. You these things you're not even thinking about. I mean, yeah. until until oh no, no, no. It's not a substitute for, for lack of effort and work. It's the it's gear, it's the next stage. You're not up there yeah. yet. <laughs> yeah. And the, the thing is, the, the and uh, again, going back to layman's terms, and, and I've used this analogy quite a few times. Right. I'm trying to cook a cupcake and I'm going to present the best cupcake you've ever seen, right? But unless I get the flour, training, butter, rest, the sugar, your food, all these things in the right places, there is no cupcake. Mm. No matter how much sparkle I put on the top, it ain't ever going to be a fucking cupcake. So until that cupcake has risen, You've iced it. You've got everything looking exactly as you want it. Those little bit of sprinkle on top will just finish the job. 
If the cupcake is there, forget your sparkle, forget your sprinkle, leave it in the cupboard. Get your, your cupcake sorted, then worry about it. You know, but as you say, unfortunately, because of so social media and everything else, but something you said there about the hunger, the hunger and the passion has been there since as long as I've known it. I've never, ever known anybody or not find a cluster of, you know, um, success driven bodybuilders in any gym, in any gym I've trained in. Mm. There's always a cluster of real passion, real drive, you know, they want to excel. That's been there for as long as I've ever known. But the availability of information is far more open than I've ever known, mm. right? And I'm not saying that information should be kept back. It shouldn't because information, knowledge is good. That's a good thing, right? So if you can manage that passion, that thirst with the knowledge, we're going to have success, okay? But as you say, unfortunately, there was a... Um, a survey done on Olympic athletes. I'm sure you've heard this, where they were told if they could take this pill and guaranteed to win an Olympic gold medal, but you would die 14 days later, would you take it? Yeah, yeah, I would, yeah. So there are that mindset, do or die athletes out there, right? But there is everything in place that there is no need. You can still do without the die, okay? But. I'm going to say this and I'm going to I'm going to do a video on this and I'm going to put it out there right now things have gone on and, and as you touched on there the um, athletes are dying unnecessarily okay now through lack of knowledge um, too much trust um, you know the thirst and, and all that is there right but they're dying but as much as it's it's stupidity, it's um, just, I don't know, but, but anyway, right? But as much as you say about the athlete, now I'm gonna take a bit of responsibility for this in as far as for the position I hold. And the position I hold is I am a head judge. I judge, I head judge, I do everything. And now the part of the Federation I'm um, now with, um, FitEx, which is uh, new to the UK and is doing absolutely brilliant work, right? It's just, I just love it. The passion of everybody is fantastic, right? But as a head judge, I'm gonna take an air responsibility. And uh, the responsibility that I'm taking and I'm gonna push forward is I am going to, and everything I can do to stamp out this unnecessary over-conditioned athlete. Mm. if we can stamp that out there will be no need for some of the things that they're taking and they're doing to get that over dryness the striations on literally on everything everything i don't need to see that yeah. i need to see condition i need to see separation i need to see full muscle bellies but they're drying themselves hydrated out. yes 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 but they're drying themselves out so severely, all you end up with is a striationed ass cheek, mm. but a saggy old bag with nothing in it. You know, so if the skin is empty, that muscle needs to be fuller. Mm. So I want to see healthy, mm. full muscle bellies, nice mm. deep lines, but I don't need to see girls so striated there's literally nothing in their skin. When you think of the, some of the physiques, like say Lenda Murray, wow, what a beautiful physique. You know, full, round muscle belly, nice separation, such a pleasing physique. But also girls and boys, competitors of today, I'm afraid everything, the future of bodybuilding is on you, okay? Mm -hmm. Because when you stand on that stage in the physique that you've worked so hard for, you are going to inspire the people that sit behind me as a judge to come forward. If you have anybody that there's nothing I enjoy more to sit, you hear somebody behind you going, I want to look like that. Yeah. Because if you want to look like that, you're going to come up and you're going to compete. So there's my next generation of athletes. But if anybody sits there and goes, I don't know if I can do that. Well, mm. you're not going to bring them forward. We must promote healthy looking, full separated physiques. The condition is applicable, but 
competitors are just getting drier and drier and harder to the point that they're almost as if they've not just dieted, yeah. but the whole last 10 days taking their, all that hard work away from themselves. Mm. People ask for feedback at the judge's table and always you see how many times I've heard, you should have seen me two days ago. Mm. Well, whatever you did two days ago was working. So whatever you've done in these last two days has not worked. Mm. So if, if the machine is working and it's fixed, don't try to refix it. It's done. It's working well. The machine is working well. Try and allow your physique to just keep on flowing for those last couple of days, you know? But as I said, I just, and as judges, it's up to us to make that change. Athletes will only do what the judges reward them for. So if those physiques that are over dieted, over dried out, way, way, way too dry, too, it's just too uh, many striations and things like that. If we're putting those in the winning positions, they're the physiques that are going to dictate what comes to the next stage. So as much as there's so much naivety then for new people coming through into competing, if they see boys and girls, and as you say, you've got bikini athletes now where you can literally see every single striation through their obliques. Not, uh... If you like that as a bikini athlete, where are you going to go? Yeah, that's the problem, look, you know, and uh, it's, it's not sustainable, look, you know, the idea should be building a physique where you can walk around with this look, you know, that's what people want to aspire to look like, don't they? you know, especially the bikini and the, the, the physique, you meant to be, a, it's a beach body, like, you know, you meant yeah. to be look good, and it's, there was people which wouldn't do it now, I remember going back a few years ago, I knew a few girls who, who look at it, an amazing body and they could get up on stage probably just because of the uh, uh they just they the way look you know that's where it was now it's hardcore you know um and the pressure's high it is but also i think what's happened is and i mean the thing is that you know it's not so much that i think or perhaps i'm speaking out of turn or anything but i mean i've sat on judges tables for so many years when women's bodybuilding was taken out of the equation, mm. right? It's almost as if then everybody's moved up one because the physiques are now women's bodybuilders are then. Mm. You've got the figure girls and now the physiques, phys physique athletes of then, and you've got the bikini girls and now the figure girls of what they were. So it's almost as if everybody's just gone up a slot. Whereas, of course, whereas female bodybuilding was the, the pinnacle and the, the fullest and the biggest of uh, female athletes, it's almost as if now they've gone, everybody just moved up the rankings. So we've got now physique athletes that are women bodybuilders. Yeah. You know, and, it's like uh, mm. that slot has been filled just with a different label now. And it's the same in the men's. I mean, you look at even the physique guys, they, they, they're they not doing anything different. They train in the same they take in the same amount of drugs, right? If they are taking drugs, unless they do it natural, they eat it, they push in the, the food, the, it's like the pushing the food with the bellies like hanging out. And it's like, you know, it's the same. What's, <laughs> what? And it, it's funny, it's like, you know, if there's a division and there's a difference in the category, there should be a difference. Not only in the criteria, but in the protocols of what you do to match that criteria. But as you say, then, as I say, go back to it. If the judges keep rewarding the physiques, well, obviously, as um, an inspiring or a, uh, an inspiring competitor, I am going to look at the physiques that win and think that's what I have to produce. You know, that's the thing. Bodybuilding is very much an aesthetics activity mm. it's all on visuals but as much as is a visual for the judge it is as a visual for the people sat behind me for the next competitors and women are worse men are bad enough but women are worse women see a look and they want to copy it look at the the likes of the kardashians and the things like that you know those looks in society Women will always want to look like somebody else. So we do everything in our power to transform ourselves into that someone else. Now, men, to a certain extent, have their package 
and just make the best of their package. I remember judging at um, a Europeans and there was a lineup of 34, um, it was um, body fitness at the time, 34 athletes, they came out and it was, I would probably say one of the hardest classes I've ever had to judge, right? Because there was 34 and they were identical. Mm. Long black straight hair, long, uh, long black straight hair, black velvet bikini, black shoes. But every one of them was exactly the same. Like, shit. Why? Mm. Because the girl the year before, long black hair, black velvet bikini, black shoes, identical. Because they, oh, that's obviously what they're looking for. So every one of them produced the same package. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. And like I said, uh, you know, one thing I want to touch on, you know, just briefly there, going back a few things that you said, one of them was, you know, the separation is what brings a classic looking physique, not the classic by age, but what do you think that's class is yeah. it's the, the quads of the, 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 not the gnarliness, that's ugly. It's the class, it's the, the depth in the separation. And this comes from training. This comes from learning how to engage muscles individually and even using compound exercises as isolations and, and being very in control. And the pausing helps as well, because if you can squeeze one little area of the body, you can connect with it. Yes. So yeah. if you don't find this in a tablet, you find this in people like Lisa, people like myself, people like Mike as well. It was very educational. You look at people and you, you go to them and you say, not what can I take? How can I turn my physique? And this is, again, you know, I sat down with Mike and I've asked you, yeah. like, Mike, you know, wh what am I doing? You know, wh what do you think? You know, well, you know, your physique, you know, I, I, it just hasn't got the roundness. Like, the, you know, the quads, okay, all right. So how do we do that? It wasn't like, well, you know, you take two of these and it's like, okay, this is, you need to do this technique, these principles, engage this, you know, and even with yourself, you know, okay, the inner yeah. pecs, okay, how do we do that? All right, this little, okay, you know, you learn from people, and, and that is there. And like you said, one of the other things that I wanted to mention, now, when I start, I'm sure it was the same with you, you know, and, and, and you get this vision, and it, you might saw something when he was a kid, or, and you were trying to achieve something you saw here, not something you saw in front of you, like at somebody else's look, you, they might have inspired you, but you were trying to achieve this goal. And, and for me, it took me probably, I reckon up until 2017, maybe 18, and I achieved it. I, I really did. I like where I set out to when I was a, a kid, really a junior, the look I wanted to achieve, I achieved it, but it took me about, it took me about 10 years. Once I achieved it, it was like, I didn't have as much hunger because it was like, well, I achieved my goal. My goal was to look a certain way. And I think another problem where you're saying why they're all the same and they're chasing this is because they're looking external. They're not looking internal. Like, what do I want? What do I want to look like with my, you know, my, my flaws and my structure and my hips? What could I look like? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um but I was slightly different in as far as, well, and Mike, I suppose, to a certain extent, because karate was the sport we came from, okay? So our, certainly starting off, weight-bearing exercise came as an assistant to my karate, okay? Bodybuilding was not my aim. It was as an aid to be faster, stronger, um, so in Kumite, which is fighting, to, I, was, um, I was very, very slight. So I was fast, but I just didn't have a lot of power behind me. So, of course, I was fast and I'd score points, but I wasn't, I felt strong enough. Because, of course, the thing is, for women then, it was women. You know, mm. there was, you know and I remember sta standing in Crystal Palace and uh, the, uh, the team we were fighting walked out and I was literally like, oh, shit. You know, my component, uh, my competitor was six foot, as wide as I was tall, you know, a good burly woman. And I thought, oh shit, here we go. So I just had to be fast, in and out, in and out, in and out. And I thought, I'm gonna have to be stronger. I can't just be fast, fast is not enough. 
So I could literally, and I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not being flip, flip, flippant in any way with the way I was with my karate. But I mean, by then I'd been doing karate 15, 16 years. Mm. And, and as I said, I was fighting for the Welsh team. That's how myself and Mike met. So Mike was obviously in the men's Welsh team and I was in the ladies Welsh team. And um, so of course the thing is then, by then we're doing five, six, seven times a week karate training, right? So I could enter a tournament and I, uh, please, I'm not being flippant, um, you know, uh, no intention of competing. Thursday, the uh, sensei, the teacher would say, right, I put you in for Sunday. Oh, I, I can't do Sunday. I don't want to do Sunday. I've put you in for Sunday. So you're in. Oh, right. Okay. So on Thursday, I could be told I was fighting on Sunday and I could go and win. Right. And that was not being flippant. It was just, but by then, it, you trained so much that you could just go and enter. Yeah. But then I started using weight bearing exercise. And this karate was something I did, something I was good at and I did. But this was something I loved. Because within six weeks of doing this, people are now, by now, 15 years, nobody knew I did karate in the job I was in. Within six weeks, people were saying, what do you do then? Why, what do you mean? I can see you, uh, you know, you do something, but what do you do? And I thought, hang on a minute, 15 years, nobody, six weeks, hmm, hang on. So this started to become um, more of a passion. This was something we did. This was something that I loved, right? And as I could see my my own body change, that was, was the drive because then what can I make this body do? I never really had a vision because this was, this was a, a counteraction to what this was, but this was just, mm, and this was like, ooh. Yeah. I'll, I'll never forget. And this was, the, this was a moment that changed me in bodybuilding in an instant. And it was off the cuff remark. I was doing um, pec deck, uh, no, 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 uh, cable crossover. I was doing cable crossover and um, a highly respected um, member of the gym we were training at the moment, at that moment, walked past and he literally walked past and he went, I can see that's working. He can see it working. Oh my God, I must have muscle and I can see it's working. He could see it's working. That completely changed everything. And from that moment, moment on, and you know what I'm like with chest, I was obsessed with what my chest could do. Absolutely obsessed with it. That has always been, and even to this day, is I have to be stronger than any man I'm training with doing chest. I have to do more reps than any man I'm training with. And I will, and I do. And my chest is just nuts. And I fucking love it, right? <laughs> but also, yeah. what more than anything, is every day goes past, I still want to be a better version of myself. Mm. Right? And my mindset is different in as far as I'm not competing. So I'm not in it to make it bigger, I'm in it to make it better. So I want to see every single muscle fiber moving. I want to see how the muscle works. I, you know, it just, that just, just get excitement in me so I can pass that on to others. Because then if I can connect to every muscle, I can connect to how every muscle works, every muscle, whether it be on top of it, on underneath it, crossing over it, in between it, if I can do that, I can pass that on to others. And then, as you say, then you see a physique develop. Then you see a physique, physique change shape. Then you see everything and how you can pose that. And especially then how you can pose it back to me. That's just, I love, absolutely love it. So as much as you say in your mind how you want to look, I want to see how every single muscle looks. So I'm a different mindset with that at the moment. And bearing in mind then every day that goes past, I'm a, a day older. I think if I can keep getting better as I get older, th that I cannot stop the inevitable. We are all gonna get older. But if I can make sure that I feel mentally and physically younger, I will hopefully keep looking younger. And that's what I want. Because I mean, the thing is obviously, um, as you say, we're, I'm next birthday, I'm 54, and I don't want to look a day younger than 53. No. So as I say, if I could just make sure there's that, but also then, as you say, as a coach or anything similar, if you're not willing to walk the walk, don't talk the talk, you know, and I'm willing to keep, keep walking, and then that means I can keep talking. 
So the, the saying is, you know, today is the last day you will ever be this young again. But today is also the first day of the rest of your life. So it's incredible. And obviously there's some NLP, like, you know, which is brilliant as a coach because, you know, the power of, of word is, is, that's why we have to be very mindful of, you know, what we say to people, they, they're more embedded than you think, you know, just that little, you know, one line of that guy said to you kind of sunk in. So, you know, that's what makes you, you know, a great coach as well, because you know how to touch people deeply and, and give them what also, not tell them what they want, but give them what they need. And yeah. often that doesn't necessarily mean that that is the truth either. That is, this person needs this at this time to start seeding the flower that's going to come. But uh, what the main question I want to know, Lisa, is who would win in a fight out your mic? <laughs> <laughs> no question. No you question. Po- you probably wouldn't fight back, would you? You probably like. No, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> Funny enough, there's, um, I was talking to my mum about this yesterday, uh, only yesterday. And um, now, you know, we, we did, um, we've done a couple of things, uh, like we did the Midnight Mass. Do you remember in the, the thing? And, yeah, it was great. Uh, it was a great night. But it was, we had quite a few um, travellers from all over the country that came for that night and it was great. But I don't know if, you, I'm sure you would well, know anyway, but... Um, I used to do things like I put challenges up for people mm. and obviously I'd challenge them to do something and I do it with them, whatever it was, whatever it was. And um, there was, there, there's quite a few posters of myself and Laz and we'd put Gelsey versus Gelsey and we'd put, we'd put a, a little thing up against each other. And there was one of uh, Mike and Laz and various other things. But one of the boys that came on the midnight mass, I, I'm sure you know him was Jules, Jules yeah. Jordan. And so I put it out to him to um, compete against myself with a certain exercise. And so we made a poster and it was myself and Jules face. I saw it, yeah, it was like, uh, yeah. like yeah. Phil and Kai. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was one of those. And um, it was a memory had come up and one of my mum's friends just said, oh my God, this is not really fighting Jules. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. She's like, are you sure now? Are you sure? She, so my mother said, well, to be fair, if they were... Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I knew I'd put a tenor on Lisa, you know. <laughs> Not really, you got to be worried about it, Jim, if they were going to fight, like, that's brilliant. And, uh, you know, like, Laz, again, it's the, it's a mentality. I mean, like, you and Mike are hardworking, and that's why I valued being around you so much. You know, I was coming to the seminars, and, and I put a post up about this the other day. It's like, it's funny how... You know, the power of thought, I mean, I'm literally living my dream, I am. And I'm sure you're doing the same. And the people that I aspired and looked up to became great friends and, and great leaders and mentors. And it's like, you know, you couldn't write this in a book, really. And it's just, it's beautiful. And the point I'm trying to make is once you surround yourself with like-minded people or people that you want to be like, you become more like them. And and like why I mentioned this is Laz is a hard worker and he's got his head down and he's great at his craft. And, and you know, he's he's a soul of his own, but also massively influenced by the, the foundation that you have in the family. And it's it, it, you watch him train and, you know, it's how can you not train like that when your mother and father, the girl sees like, you know, <laughs> you'll be out to the out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you realize- it's, it's quite bizarre because it's, actually quite a lot of people don't realize that we have a daughter as well yeah. and um our daughter is obviously quite a bit older than Laz so Lauren is she'd be 31 in January and Laz is 27 in December but Lauren absolutely po- beyond poles they're different planets Lauren has never ever been one for the gym and I totally respect that it's not her thing she gave it a go didn't like it so didn't bother and, and that's the thing. So as much as Laz has followed us gym wise, but Lauren is again, what she's taken from us more than anything is a work ethic. She is a worker and whatever she t- decides to go into, whether it, it's been, um, cause she's uh, not long qualified as a primary school teacher. So again, she's decided that's the avenue she wanted to go. And by God, head down, 
five years of uni, nailed, come out with a job. And, you know, so again, her work ethic is extraordinary, but it's exactly, as you say, neither of them seen any difference. Mm. They don't know. They just know to succeed, you work. If you work, you succeed, you know? Yeah, and like I said, she's 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 a teacher, and you're all teachers, you know. It, it just in, well, it's the same thing, and it's what I say to people. It's like, you know, a goal is a goal, you know. Uh, if a goal is a goal, and sometimes a goal is life changing, and sometimes a goal will determine life or not, you know. If you a goal to come off alcohol, it's a goal, and people need nourishment. They need a mentor. They need the right guidance, support, the will to, to do it, which is probably over anything. You know, you're so right on that because the thing is, whatever goal you have in life, if you want to achieve it, you will achieve it. But there's so many different ways to get to that goal. Now, starting off, um, sometimes you can be so um, blinded by the goal, you're not watching the journey to the to the actual the goal itself. Now I've got a, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but I got a few tattoos. Obviously, you know, but I got one tattoo on on me, and that's that's the one that sticks with me more than anything. Success is the journey, not the destination. Yeah. Right. And that's the thing: the success of the journey, you get to the the destination. That is where you learn so much. That's where. Um, that's the life changing, not the goal itself, how you get there. You know, there are so many different routes, but sometimes when you start out on that, that journey, you're blinded by the goal. No, don't absorb everything along the way, you know, take it all in. That's where you learn. That's where everything is picked up along the way. That's beautiful. And I, that's what I'm learning now, to be honest, so I understand more about myself. I'm, I, I enjoy the process more than the reward. in all honesty. Yeah. I mean, the reward like does does very little is short lived and people assume when they get to this they're gonna their life no 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 it's like get into it will change your life not yeah. it itself it's the journey to it which is gonna teach you I'll give you another example well I put all that work in and I this is what I've had of many people and I'm sure you've had and for what for the plastic trophy no you learned more about yourself. You become stronger, you tougher, you understand things. These are gifts, man. You yeah. spent more money on a vacation that you got drunk and don't even remember. What are you talking about? This is an investment in you. It's not a silver trophy. It's like what the? It's it's the journey. You know that's it's beautiful. Because I did um uh, they did a documentary on me quite some time ago. And the uh, camera crew came to the house and everything else, and they said, um, "Where's your trophies?" I went, "What? Where's your trophies?" Oh, why? Oh, well, you know, it's great to have trophies. I said, "Oh, yeah, well, I got them." I said, "But they're in the, a box at the back of the garage, you know, behind all that shit and rubbish over there. Do you really want to see them?" Well, I'm. You got them out, yeah, but I don't need a bit of resin to mm. tell me how good I am. That is just. Oh, there you go. That's what you get at the end of it. Everything you do to get there, that's your trophies. I walk around on my with my trophies on me every minute of the day. I don't need that to prove to me how hard I've worked. I know how hard I've worked. And as you say, the thing is, when you learn all that, it doesn't matter if there's nothing at the end of it. No. That's not what it's for, you know? But um, I've been working with, I work, obviously, you know, varied men, women, young, older, high level competitors, just getting into it. But um, I've been doing quite a lot. And as you say, what I, and how I invest in um, the people I'm working with, I'm not one of those coaches that shouts and screams at you. When there's need to, mm. when there's need to, I'll have to raise my voice. But I would rather talk to you because yeah. if I talk to you, you relax. Don't ever, and as advice to anybody, go in, don't ever go into a session angry. Mm. Because when you go into a session angry, you've already wasted so much energy. Relax into the movement. Move with the machine. Mm. Don't fight the machine. Don't ever fight a rep. Don't ever throw away a rep, because there's a rep I'll never, ever get back. 
And if I throw away a rep before I know it, I've thrown away the set. If I've thrown away the set, I've thrown away the exercise. If I've thrown away the exercise, get in the car, go home and try again tomorrow. You know, and one guy I was with, and as soon as he'd go into the leg extension, mm. and I'd be going, just relax, mm. just relax. And he always got more and more reps out. Yeah. If you can just, whenever you're doing an exercise, if you can just welcome all mm. those reps in, because again, every rep I have is an opportunity to succeed. If I fight it, it's an opportunity to fail. So, you know, even that, just sometimes mm. think, think yeah. of the goal. Even the goal is 20 reps, even if the goal is 20 sets, even if the goal is to have the best leg session you've ever had. Small goals, achievable goals, but still enjoy the journey. Think about what you're learning as you go through to the goal. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, I, I mean, I've experienced that. And I used to be the same, you know, that negative mindset to spark the beast inside, to go to the gym. And in the end, it was just tiring. And, you know, we, we all know there's, there's two ways to get uh, to achieve. And that is through force or through flow. Once you put yourself in flow, which is a calm state, everything comes to you. And another thing I want to touch on, right? Those people with trophies up, okay, are egotistic, okay? They cover in something up. They have low self-esteem and they, they quite frank, ugly, you know, if I'm a, <laughs> or shit. <laughs> As you would say, I was thinking, oh shit, let me just like put my head like this, like, no, nah, but I have uh, some of the, these are over the last couple of years. This office here has got so much, um, just just inspiration. I mean, I got my father's self-portrait there. I got my guitar. I got my vision board. I got like, you know, my, all my bookshelf. It's, it's just really like, for me, this is for me. Just when I come in, it just gives me some form of, of okay, ready to work. But um, yeah, Lisa, but, uh, go on, sorry. But as you say, that's your spot. That's your spot. I'm very lucky. I am very, very lucky. My spot is less than seven minutes away and is huge and is full of equipment. So that's my spot. So I'm lucky I've got that, you know? I can't wait. I'll be home soon. My sister's um, just about to give birth again. And uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just waiting, to be honest. We came back home a few weeks ago, but we were home isolation because we came from Greece. So it was very low profile and it was a couple of days, but I want to come home. I just... I want to avoid any form of government um, quarantine and, and I want to check it out. But I got one last question for you, Lisa. Yeah. What one piece of advice would you give anybody wanting to transform their life? One piece of advice. Know what you want and go and get it. Nobody will ever do this for you. And this isn't bodybuilding, this is life. I got one crack at this. I make the life I want, you know? So whatever you want out of life, go for it, go and get it. Nobody will do it for you, but it's going to be hard, but you commit, you consistently work at it and rewards will always come. Love it. Beautiful. Thank you very much. And Lisa, where can people reach out to you? You know, where's your social media? I know you're barely on your phone, but where can people find you? Yeah, so you've got um, either Facebook, which is just myself, L-E-I-C-A-G-E-L-S-E-I. -E -E and if not, then it's in on Instagram. And Instagram is, Michael? Mike underscore. Mike underscore. Lisa. Lisa. L-E-I-C-A. Yeah. Underscore Gelsey. Underscore Gelsey. You got that. <laughs> we put it, I think we put it in the links below. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. The trouble is, Instagram, unfortunately, is either Mike or Laz, because again, you know, I'm literally back to back to back to back. But please, uh, direct message on Facebook, anything, no problem, anytime. Yeah, and, and, and just, you know, Lisa does a lot of online courses and uh, tuitions as well. So, you know, the yeah. world has become a smaller place for this lockdown. And um, I've learned a lot from Mike as well, Lisa, Laz, everybody, and... Um, Everybody that I, I bring forth to these kind of podcasts and I mention, I, I think of it like we're all doing the same thing. We all work for the same firm. I've said this many times. My vision and my goal is to help as many people as I can. I can't do this alone. I need a team. 
I need ambassadors, but also I need to also bring light to people who are delivering the same message because the more people that do that, the more I get it closer to my goal. So I want to thank you very much, Lisa. And thank you, Mike, as well. <laughs> and, uh, so, and I, I wanna... enjoyed that. I was, I, enjoyed, I was listening through pretty much all of it. It was good. But, yeah, it went on a bit long, but I really appreciate the time, guys. And um, I'm That's really thankful right. and blessed. And I look forward to seeing you in person. And thank yeah. you. We'll put your links below. So thanks once again. And um, okay. have a good evening. And thank you as well, guys and girls, if you haven't done yet. Hit the subscribe button, comment below, share this video. We need more people like you signing up with us, understanding how to do things the correct way. And thank you again, both. Have a nice night, and I'll speak to you soon, yeah? Good night. Bye.